Hello and welcome to Shanmugam Mahesh Academy. This is Ashwin. I welcome you all for current events of the day. Let us take up the topics for today's discussion. The first one is Energy Efficiency Enterprise Certification Scheme, Plea Challenges, Places of Worship, uh, Act 1991 in Supreme Court, Electoral Autocracy by Vidam Institute, Committee on Saraswati River Adenovirus. So these are all the five topics that we are going to discuss based on prelims as well as mains. The first one, Power Minister launches Energy Efficiency Enterprise Certification Scheme. The Ministry of Power has launched E3 Certification Program, which means Energy Efficiency Enterprises. That is why it is known as E3 Certificate for Brick Manufacturing Sector. The Energy Efficiency Enterprise Certification Scheme is aims to recognize burnt clay brick manufacturers for adopting, adopting energy efficiency manu manufacturing of the bricks. It encourages customers to source bricks from such E3 certified manufacturing units. So here, uh, government is choosing a bricks, bricks manufacturing units and they are giving E3 certificates who all are using energy in a minimum amount. So what is a nodal agency? Bureau of Energy Agency is the nodal agency to provide this certificate. How will E3 certificate be awarded? Brick manufacturing enterprises need to meet the minimum specific energy consumption performance criteria. The criteria can be met by brick manufacturing enterprises by adopting the measures like improving energy efficiency in manufacturing, producing bricks having lower densities uh, with porous perforations and hollow bricks so that we can produce a minimum amount of things by using minimum amount of energy use efficiency. The program will help the brick industry shift towards more technologized manner of brick production. Such energy efficiency bricks will be useful in compiling with the requirement of ECBC that is Energy Conservation Building Code. See there has been a, a code which is given by Ministry of Power 2007 uh, in the year of 2007 which says that there is some standard to produce a commercial building with minimum use of energy. So here we can check out that is this bricks or bricks manufacturing uh, units are following that this ECBC that is Energy Conservation Buildings Code. Contribution of brick sector in India. Uh, this demand is expected to multiply three to four times over the next 20 years because our population is increasing and we are going to increase our industrial sector. So to be the uh, India is world's second largest producer of bricks. So it going to be happen by within the 20 years of next. Bricks sector contributes nearly 0.7 percentage to the country's gross domestic product. It offers seasonal employment generation over 1 crore workers. In Bricks Chamber, we will be having more number of labors, either male or female workers will be employed by the employer over the Bricks Chamber. It is important for sectors such as transportation and constructions. So, we have to increase also the transportation and construction construction process through producing bricks. Brick manufacturing industry consumes about 45 to 50 million tons of coal uh, which is equivalent to annual. It amounts to 5 to 50 percentage of total energy consumption in the country. It is also very high yet, but it leads to some constructions and buildings which is essential for people and for the growth of India. However, the brick sector has the second largest potential for energy efficiency amongst the Indian industrial sector after the steel and more than cement. So steel is the number one sector in India. After that, we are having cement. And the third one is a growing one that is bricks. So please have an idea about brick and you can use this percentage for main sensor reading also. So the next current affair is plea challenges, places of worship, Act 1991 in Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has the center to respond. The petition which challenges the place of worship uh, special provisions act 1991. What is that act says? The act was passed in 1991. It seeks to maintain the religious characteristics of the place. Uh, was in 1947. So it is not applicable to the Ram Janma Bhumi Babri Masjid. 
dispute because it is growing issue nowadays we have to study about it so it was not applicable this act of act of 1991 was not applicable to ram janmabhoomi babri masjid what are the provisions of this act section 3 it says that no person shall convert any place of worship of any religious denomination into one of a different denomination or section that is the section 3 section 4 class 2 says all cases of for converting the character of a place of worship that were pending in august 5 1947 will stand abetted with a enforcement of this act no fresh proceedings can be filed after that so this is why it is exempted from this ram janmabhoomi babri masjid ka babri masjid dispute is exempted from this worship act 1991 the legal proceedings can be initiated if the change of status of religious character of worship place to place after the cut off date of 15 1947 so august 15 1947 is the cut off date uh, given in this section 4 class 2 what is the exemption under uh, section 5 it says that act shall not be applied to ram janmabhoomi babri masjid dispute other than that the act also exempts any place of worship that is an ancient and historical monument or an archaeological site so archaeological site we also discussed in the earlier current of year if you go through that you can understand that it must be covered by the ancient monument and archaeological sites and remains act in 1958 so under this act you also have to note down here that we used to uh, nominate the things we have found the pots and other sculptures for example in shivaganga the keeledi uh, also was uh, registered under the act of ancient monuments and archaeological sites under monuments act 1958 any dispute that has been settled by the parties or conversion of any place that took place by acquisitions before the act commenced so this is the exemptions given by section 5 of this uh, special provisions act 1991 a supreme court on this act what the supreme court says uh, we have the issue related to ayodhya in the 2019 ayodhya verdict the constitution bench which has been led by chief justice of india he referred the law and said it manifests the secular values of the constitution and strictly prohibits the retrogression so this was the verdict uh, given in ayodhya what are the key objection to the act petitioner the petitioner has challenged the place of worth act 1991 on the following grounds he says that it violates the secularism so india is a secular country uh, the uh, it should not depend on any uh, hinduism or jainism buddhism or six sikhism so it is a secular approach has been affected uh, which the petitioner says the center has no power to legislate on pilgrimage or burial grounds which is under the state list as it is also a true one you have to know down what is state list and center list so pilgrimage and burial grounds are not under center list it is under state list the cut off date of the act is the date of independence it means the status quo determined by colonial power is considered final so he are also criticizing that this is the date given by the colonial period it is not by given by the independent india india rated as a electoral autocracy by vedam institute so vedam institute is a french a sweden based uh, uh, institute which has been uh, categorizing the democracy of different countries based on that they have categorized india's democracy also by the information gathered from the uh, country's experts across india so it has been released by vedam varieties of democracy democracy that is v for varieties dem for democracy varieties of democracy it is an independent research organization founded in 2014 by swedish political scientist stefan lindberg the objective is to no down the backdrop of democracies the data has been gathered as i have discussed and told yearly the country's experts across india the statistical model was uh, prepared what is the key findings related to india india is rated as autocratic along with pakistan autocratic in the sense it is uh, one person uh, dominant it is not based on the electoral nomination uh, it's like hitlerism that is what autocracy uh, if i can use the word hitler you can easily understand how the process is going on in india as per the electoral autocracy vedam institutes uh, references 
it is worse rating than both its neighbors countries such as bangladesh and nepal so it is very worse as uh, compared to bangladesh and uh, nepal india is also among 25 autocracies nations along with brazil turkey and other countries reason for downgrading uh, india recently uses uh, frequently uses the defamation section 499 and the sedition 124a to silence the journalist and critics which leads uh, to downgrade india in autocracy report users of unlawful activities that is opa act 2019 they have amended it the place constraints and civil society so it has also curbed some foreign funds also through the act of fcra that is foreign contribution regulation act uh, through which we are the government is restricting the civil society organization uh, or the non governmental organizations that is ngo the global findings uh, the liberal democracies have reduced over the past decade from 41 countries to 32 countries so it is a worst thing you have to you can use this to note or to start up with a introduction in your mind sensor rating the global decline during the past decade is increasing especially in the asia specific region central asia eastern europe and latin america center constitutes committee on saraswati river so it is a myth it is also known as a mythological saraswati river because the basin and its foundation is not yet known by anyone so india an indian uh, government has formed the advisory committee on saraswati river to found out its origin and its basins and its way of path so it has been nominated the archaeological survey of india uh, to identify uh, the uh, the map of that river and the basin and its definite path it will be chaired by cultural minister so members are the ministry of culture tourism water resources environment and forest housing and urban affairs more than five ministry are engaging in it representatives of isro also the indian space research organization in which they will be identifying or uh, sensitizing through uh, remote sensing uh, governments officials of gujarat haryana and rajasthan and also the archaeological survey of india officials also will be participating in this uh, progress update on national population register we here we have to look into that because it is be it has been creating a much uh, manifestations among people uh, a negative manifestation we can say here we have to study about it national population register is a register to count the uh, usual residents of the country mm. this time it is going to be happen as the government says it is going to be happen in online the objective of this to create a comprehensive identity database of every usual resident in the country so usual resident as a usual resident for npr is defined as a person who is residing in a local area for a past 6 months so he should live in india for past 6 months or more than that then only he can be registered under npr or a person who intends to reside in that area for the next 6 months or more either this person who will be living for the past 6 months or he should have the willingness to live for the next 6 months or more the npr was first collected in 2010 this is the database we are using in the phase of census 2011 it has been conducted by the N- register general and ex officio census commission of india so please note down who is conducting the census legal provisions npr is being prepared at local sub district district state and national level then only we can gather all the information related to the local residents it should be bottom up approach it is conducted under the provisions of citizenship act 1955 and the citizenship rules 2003 it is mandatory for every usual resident of india to register in npr so if you are an indian you should register your details in the npr so recently we have seen a new virus that is adenovirus and uh, um, upsc will be focusing on the things which are more famous in uh, usually but recently they used to focus more on small such things which we are not focusing so here it is important for us to notice what is adenovirus so adenovirus is a common virus which causes the illness among us they can also cause like symptoms sore throat bronchitis pneumonia diarrhea 
and pink eye pink eye in the sense conjunctive conjunctivities the bulkiness of eyes are you know where is are non enveloped so that they will not be having any uh, covered material and they are double stranded dna virus so here we have to compare it with covid 19 so what is that structure what is this structure what is that envelope what is that protein so here they are having glycoprotein that is the star like structure around the covid 19 but here they are don't have any kind of envelopes they were first discovered in human dinoid tissue so human dinoid tissue in which we they have identified the adeno virus so adeno virus can be transmitted like covid 19 if it is if you are engaging in personal contact and shaking hands and it is also transmitted to air coughing and sneezing and through touching of an object or surface with adeno virus on it then touching mouth nose or eyes before washing hands it can it is having the same characteristics in spreading or persistence like covid 19 but it is uh, by the composition and the appearance will be different from covid 19 how is adeno virus infection treated there is no specific treatment for people with adeno virus infection most adeno virus infections are mild so these infections may require only to relieve symptoms such as over the counter pain medicines or fever reduces so it is important to know about adeno virus so we are studying about corona virus uh, more if, uh, frequently but it is adeno virus we are studying today have a look on it so thank you for watching with this we wind up today's session let us meet you on tomorrow session